One Piece, if you've noticed, has been on that Fire Force grind. In chapter 1065, when Lilith first mentioned that the entire power source for the whole area, the whole country, was fire, which is probably the same power source that powers the object that destroyed the theoretical Lulucia kingdom. In the latest chapter of One Piece, we get to see for the first time the Mother Flame. And there is a lot that absolutely positively needs to be discussed about the Mother Flame. However, I remember once again the words of Lilith, like she's some sort of prophet for me in that same chapter 1065, where fire can be converted into all types of energy. Said in the Viz translation, and the scans they say, after all, you can't convert its power into any kind of energy. That is the versatility, that is the freedom of fire. And just think about right now, how many unique and crazy ways we have seen fire be used in the story of One Piece. People like Big Mom and Mother Karma have made sentient soul living fire. Marco the Phoenix has healing fire. Ace and Sabo themselves were the living embodiment of fire. You have Kaido Momonosuke use flame clouds to walk across the sky and levitate islands and move them around. King the Wildfire and other Lunarians can utilize fire to gain some kind of invincibility factor. You can even argue that Yamato's power of quote unquote frost, based on the anime, can actually be interpreted as cold fire. And there is an idea that Luffy is going to eat, consume, like Kirby is going to uh, consume the mother flame and that is going to be pivotal in some major way for his character and or lead to a major buff. So more weird things with fire could be happening real soon with Monkey D. Luffy. And potentially this applies to all of the weird fire members in the Straw Hat Pirates, which right now just so happens to be the Monster Trio. Mm. Sanji, Zoro, add three asterisks to Zoro's name, obviously, and the myth, the monkey, massive, Nika D, Luffy. There are themes that are important to their frame abilities and their characters. So let's dive right into, let's talk about the fires of Sanji, Zoro, and monkey D, Luffy. <laughs> Sanji's cosmic fire. Sanji controls his body temperature at will and has always had higher degrees of temperature resistance than normal, stated SBS 105. Sanji's ability to generate fire is assumed to be a result of DNA modification, lineage factor modification. Just how Yonji can break apart his arm with a winch, how Rage can absorb an attack with poison, Niji with lightning, and then Ichiji with energy, Sanji's also unique in some properties. The weird thing though, is that Sanji's Rage suit grants him invisibility, and he can mimic that with high speed movement, true, but his actual natural body can't itself, as far as I know, go invisible. Niji could attack Sanji with the Henry Needle and still have lighting effects to that attack. All the German kids can also utilize their innate powers without their raid suits to some degree. But Sanji and Invis, not the case here, it's Sanji and fire. So there is a possibility, one, that Sanji's fire is related to hockey in some unique way. Elemental hockey for a while. Think of going all the way back to the Red Rock and Horty Jones, right? Kinemon can conjure fire onto his blade. And even Shanks had a flaming sword in One Piece film Red. So the fire that Sanji operates with could be a hockey related thing. That's number one. Number two is that another option is Sora related. Sora, his mother, her genes, her DNA is the reason why Sanji can attain this ability of fire. Were her sacrifice suppressed, the Germa modifications in Sanji's body, which allowed her DNA, her abilities to bloom within Sanji, and that's why Sanji has an ability that is gonna say tied to his raid suit, unlike the other Germa kids. But regardless of the source, his fire abilities are not all that complicated and they don't seem to contain any sort of supernatural aspect to them, but they're hot. They are unbelievably hot. You've heard the phrase before, Sanji's heart burns hotter than fire. 
and we've seen Sanji be able to adjust his temperature of his flames at will throughout the entire post time skip. You can even take that same line about Sanji's heart and then inferring that Sanji's fires normally are much hotter than regular fire. And at times, with his attacks, we don't even see fire. What we see instead is a cross-shaped star. The grill shot against the Kraken where he was able to do this sort of energy, this sort of fire underwater, under massive amounts of water pressure, it still happened. Or think of when he fought against Judge. When he was finally able to commit himself to taking down his father, we see literally his leg transform and it becomes a sort of star, therefore a sign of exuding greater temperature. So again, Sanji's fire abilities mainly tie to temperature, which tie into his emotions. Thank goodness his mother made that sacrifice because without these emotions, he would not be able to use his powers the way he can now. And crazy enough, now his body can even handle greater, even hotter temperatures, implying that before his body couldn't until his mutations for his germ abilities were done during Wano Country. And his blue flames can even produce <laughs> plasma lightning around them. Crazy. That, that is crazy hot. This only backs up the idea that Sanji's heat just is not normal. And the only thing that would fit the bill with the blue flames being made by sheer temperature that are already hotter at a base on with the devil egg than normal fire and then be able to produce plasma lightning would be something akin to the blue giant stars. That's right, stars that have temperatures that even exceed our own sun. There is a chance that the mother flame is the same color like Sandy's Ifri, since it's also a power source that was naturally created. Remember, the power source of the ancient robot was even better than the power source that Vegapunk was able to achieve now. But the power source now is a nuclear fission reactor base power source, the mother flame. And because of that, we know that the power of the stars is there. It's in the mother flame. And there's a good chance that we're seeing Sanji here is in the same vein, in some sense, tapping in to some sort of Mario star power to make those insanely hot e free flame. Even the themes of once again, tying back to his own mother, Sora, who again, sacrificed herself for Sanji to keep his humanity and be the man that he is today, a character who is very closely linked to human interaction. It's a very important part of his character. And lo and behold, a natural thing for humans to have with one another. The passions and emotions that Vegapunk had while attempting to get close to the sun are the very fuel that powers Sanji's key ability. Each one in their own way tapping into the power of the stars. And as Oda said in SBS 45, in a lot of ways, in so many ways, Sanji right now does feel like a devil fruit user. But in this case here, a naturally created devil fruit user. Zoro's demonic fire. In order for Zoro to become the king of hell, he needed to tame the wild Enma, Enma. and set hellfire to his sword. Ah, stated in the episode 1062 preview. Here's the thing about Zoro. It is really hard to say what exactly are the wisp around Zoro's swords, but it would be crazy to say that they were without purpose. One, you could assume they are hockey related, where the Conqueror's hockey infusion of Zoro might or might not be related into the green fire of Zoro, we're not too sure. It could, let's say, be Conqueror's hockey, but not infusion related, or let's say it could be tied to his armament hockey. Remember, his affinity for hockey is that hockey type, and these green flames could be some sort of ultimate form of that. Number two is that he does, he does know the Fire Fox style. He stole that at some point off screen from Kinemon and these green flames could be his own rendition of the Fire Fox style. Some Japanese folklore do depict Kitsunebi, Fire Foxes, by having this sort of bluish green breath, and then they breathe out these sort of greenish bluish fireballs that they use to light up the night. Fire Fox style, green fireballs, 
in the night, the connections there could exist for damn sure. But it could also be number three, actual genuine hellfire. But the question is from there, what is? Hellfire. I've done a video on this two years ago in the past talking about Zoro's flames. There is a chance that we are dealing with flames that have ultimately super, supernatural, Sam and Dean Winchester, supernatural ties to the soul rather than flames that actually burn. In many myths and stories, green flames are more associated with ghosts, the undead, witchcraft, earth, Think about Zoro's mom, Terra, and we even see some of these signs in our good old boy, Yohohoho Brook. Brook's soul does beat on a higher frequency than most people. And when Brook is in his astral projection sort of form, we do see these three in the anime, at least they're green. We do see these embers around Brook's main soul. So Zoro's green wisp are very similar to the green embers around Brook when he's in astral projection form. So if Brook has a soul frequency that is on a higher level than most, we can apply that same logic then to Zoro. And the idea of soul being important for at least some swordsmen in the world of One Piece does make some sense because we see it with the connection to the swords themselves, where Zoro has referred to his swords, uh, Enma to uh, Sakatetsu, to Warichimonji, he's referred to these swords as more than just items or equipment, but more like living things. He can connect with them on a soul, on a deeper level. This would also relate to why Zoro saw death, Grim, from Billy and Mandy after he fought against King the Wildfire. Zoro is someone that has been close to death so many times in the story. Think about what happened in Thriller Bark when he took Luffy's pain. Think about Kizaru almost taking him out. Obviously, clearly what happened in Wano Country where after the mink drug wore off, he was literally seeing death and he couldn't move. In the anime, it's a whole scene where he seemingly is in the underworld when death comes on in and goes to that swipe. But would death really miss? Hmm? Did death really miss Zoro? Or did Zoro genuinely die, but in some unique supernatural way come back to life? We don't know, or kept a secret. But Zoro does have odd things, for, for sure, has odd things going about surrounding his character. And this could also even tie, going all the way back to the lineage of Zoro that spans decades, centuries, to Ryoma, the legendary samurai of Wano. And in some sense, just like with Yu Yu Hakusho and the atavism of the Mazaku, it could be the atavism of the Shimotsuki and what is Ryoma could be now Zoro in some sense. Again, all tied into the soul, the kingdom hearts within the heart. So whatever the case may be when it comes to Zoro's embers, likely not heat related, but I would argue supernatural elements are at play here. And one of the odd things about this character we still don't know about, like, like Ashra, where we still do not know for certain what the deal is with Ashra. How can he manifest this thing like Ashra? I'd argue that most signs, just like the green ghastly flames around his sword, Ashra and those green embers have the same ties to Brook's soul solid, those frozen winds of the netherworld. <laughs> Luffy's heavenly fire. Every time I reread chapter 1049, I swear to all the gods across space and time that it looks like his whole body is covered in fire right after Momo moves the island. <laughs> the anime says no, so I've pulled back my take on that. Don't. Not completely, because I dig in my flames in chapter 1094. Yes, the flames did arrive, finally. And we see this in the star gun. Nasty left hook onto Kizaru's cranium. It is the closest thing we've seen so far in Gear 5 to Luffy's usual Red Hawk and Red Rock. What we don't know, though, are the colors of those flames just yet. But based on the scan translation of that same chapter, they have white star gun. 
So it could be the case here where maybe those flames are designed like Gear 5 in some way where they are white. Let's say white and reddish sort of color. And it's also possible here that the mother flame color is the same color as the white star gun flame colors. Linking up the mother flame to Luffy even more so, which would be another reason why cats want Luffy to consume the mother flame for some kind of buff and pivotal moment. However, I think, honest to God, folks are selling Luffy short. Correct the Mundo, short. <laughs> Vegapunk himself admitted that he got too close to the sun, despite the Mother Flame being one of his best creations. Luffy is the, he is the sun god. Not getting close to the sun, he is the one. He's the one. The Nika of legends. And I think his scope goes, goes far, far beyond the Mother Flame. Think of, you know, for example, the ancient power source that existed a long time ago. The power source that surpassed the Mother Flame and likely powers in some unique way the metal iron giant to this day. If the flames on Luffy's star gun are white, then I think the themes are clear where this sort of white fire is akin to the actual sun's color, but viewed in space, or I guess lack thereof, viewed in space. Maybe let's say even a white dwarf star. <laughs> white, let's say from the perspective of a mangaka, could be the blank canvas that an artist can use and create whatever they wanna create. Or for a writer, whatever they wanna write. Creating a world that they can bend to their whims. Harkening back to Anno's words in chapter 280, a god, a kami can bend the world to their whim. Shots to Par Vision for that, for sure. And to me, for damn sure, without a doubt, it has always, it has always been about the undying and eternal flame in relation to Monkey D. Luffy, first mentioned by once again, my prophet Lilith in chapter 1065. What is a sun god if not the ultimate, if not the ultimate form of fire? Not the mother flame fire, which is close to the sun, but the ultimate actual sun, the pinnacle of fire. Though in Luffy's case, other things are stacked on top of that too weird, zany, whatever the hell stuff, but that is not the subject for this video. <laughs> no, it's not. But it is crazy though. The mother flame is the result of nuclear fusion. And it is still not on the same level of what the ancients had a long time ago. A long time ago. How is that possible? Nuclear fusion is technology that we're striving for in today's day and age even now. It is the process that takes place within the stars themselves. And it's through that nuclear fusion process that we get the light that illuminates the entire solar system, but yet somehow, some way, that is inferior to the undying flame. Bruh. That, I think, is a genuine sign that this eternal flame, this undying flame, is beyond the scope of normal means. If it ties to Luffy, then this sort of sun godly flame likely refers to the ideas that Dr. Vega Punk himself mentioned when Rob Lucci and Luffy clash. The abilities, the powers themselves are loathed by the sea because they are natural. Someone like Sanji can use his fires no problem, no problem underwater. The sea does not loathe Sanji, but the sea does loathe Monka D, Luffy. And the reason being is that these sort of powers are alien, come from another plane of existence. Godly planes? Mm. Planes of existence that shouldn't operate here on the world. Oh yeah. So what, whatever the roots are, I think that this is what we can expect for Luffy in the future. I think we haven't seen exactly what the elders feared about the ability yet that they mentioned in chapter 1044. And when you think about the drums of liberation, liberation, liberation. activating a robot that should have been dormant with no energy after 200 years of inactivity, when you think about the themes of gods bending the world, the ultimate power source they had back then, knowing that Joy Boy himself was from the same kingdom from that point in time, and he was the first pirate. A lot of these themes and all these ideas, I think do tie back to one word, 
freedom. Blank canvas, the white canvas, the ultimate freedom, where the artist, the author can create anything they want to. And the freest person on the oceans is who? The King of the Pirates. But when it comes to this subject about freedom, particularly the drums liberation, I'm gonna save that for another video, another day. <laughs> This is my video on the fires of the Monster Trio as I currently see them. I think that there has to be a lot more focus on Zoro. There has to be a lot more focus on Zoro. Luffy, I feel, will get his obviously because as we go throughout the story, he is the sun god that has to be explained more in detail. And I feel like Luffy's abilities in some way can actually do it genuine earnest damage to the elders. I do like the idea a lot that Jay Garcia Saturn was forced to power down when he was in the vicinity of the mother flame. This demon, this vampire got too close to the sun. So hopefully there'll be something tying that to Luffy in the future, cause I love that idea. But Zoro's just weird. <laughs> Zoro just, that has to have like a whole deep dive for Zoro. Like a whole month of just Zoro diving into that, like what's going on here with Zoro and these fires and these wisps. Because I think that tied to Ashra, maybe to even like Ryoma, maybe Ushimaru through, let's say, lineage factor stuff. I think it's possible as well. Oda has to give Zoro that sort of deep dive. He does. Especially if there's a connection between the underworld and Zoro, like let's say with Brooke. Because we're seeing now with the Goro say, Ethan has potentially the winds of the netherworld the same way that Brooke does. Maybe someone else among the Goro say has the hellfire of the netherworld that maybe Zoro has. So Oda may tackle these things sooner than we would think. And then for Sanji, again, it's really simple. Just get hotter, bro. <laughs> Low. What we're talking about here could be things that are nuclear fusion based because what he's doing ain't normal. Making plasma lightning ain't normal. Sanji has have a body, or let's even a raid suit in the future, let's see he gets it back, that can withstand his own abilities. Sanji used Ifri Jambe just like that. He just, okay, I have, Better body now? Cool, I can go hotter. So for him, it's a really simple line here. It's a really simple thought process, but his body has to actually withstand his own abilities. Otherwise, he could, let's say, even burn himself, which we haven't seen yet, but that could happen in the future. If he doesn't have, let's say, a strong enough body and or potentially the right equipment. And the races were to a degree fire proof and fire resilient. So on that note, on that note, let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to join the notification squad. I'm going to catch you guys and gals on the flip side. See you. Bye-bye.